Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for game three in the anticipated matchup between the Tampa Spartans and the Palm Beach Atlantic Sailfish. We're here getting things early started on this 83 degree day, a hot sunny day at the Jake Rubin Park here in West Palm. The Sailfish is looking to snag one in the series and scrape one out to finish the final game between these two teams. The number four ranked Tampa taking two wins in this series, ultimately winning the series between these two. The Sailfish looking to snag one win, scrape one out here against a really top team that could prove something for them going into the later parts of their season. Gonna get things er started early here. Petrick on the mound for the Sailfish. So you know, Joe, taking even one game from a top team like Tampa would speak volumes for the level that this PBA team is playing at right now. They come into this matchup six and four overall, and it, it was always kind of their goal to see if they could take just one game from this series, and they have another opportunity to do that right here and right now. Petrick on the mound. You know, look to get things started here. As it's hit out to center field, Ferranda goes to make the dive but cannot make the play. Going two there for a double for Lala and the Spartans. The Spartans so getting it started baseman, early. Two, the Spartans Drew going to get an extra base hit off of Petrick, and they are excited. You know, Joe, I'm really surprised, actually, that Ferranda is starting this game. He pitched three innings in the last one and then took an 0 for 4 at the plate, so. Bunt down. Ferranda, big part of the Sailfish team. He's a pitcher. He's a great fielder. He's a great hitter. He was not able to get anything going last game, but coach has a lot of trust in him and faith in him to keep him out there for the third game in this series. Foul ball behind the batter's box. Housen went to make a play, realized that he cannot. Ball comes up to the press box. But back to what you said earlier, I think I agree with you. Uh, the Sailfish's main objective was to just try to grab one in this series. And uh, they had the opportunity Friday night as foul ball goes down. Had the opportunity Friday night losing a two a close two to one game against Tampa in the first game of the series. Yeah. Ultimately not able to pull and get their uh, win, but they definitely thought as it was inside, thought they could have got one there on Friday. Dan Beebe, the pitcher for the Sailfish going eight full innings for the Sailfish on Friday night. as it's a ball. Okay, okay. So we got a three, two count here. And that is a close call, but it is a walk for the Sailfish. So Patrick finding himself in some trouble early here with a man on second and first. Stepping up, Urso. Urso getting his first at look at this game. So Petrick has two men on, runner in scoring position, bunt down. Because he's not able to connect there. So 1-0 count here for Petrick. Checks the runner at second. Swing and a miss, make it 1 1. Yeah. 1 1 count here for the Sailfish. Bunt down, gets it down, play to third. 
Fires it over to first and he got him. Great play by Blair there to make that play. Blair Davis, great play. Take that down. He charged up in, stepped up, fired that across the diamond to Figueroa and makes a great play. Spartans runners move over so the sacrifice does work out for Urso. So Nunez stepping in, the lefty batter. One out for the Sailfish. Strike down the middle. Great pitch by Petrick. Man on third and second here for the set for the Spartans. Ball outside in the other batter's box. One one count here for the Sailfish. And there's a shot out to center field. Ferranda on it, but the Spartans will be tagging up straight through to third. Great throw, and he's out. Great throw by Matt Ferranda. Gunned him, hosed him down. And we will be going to commercial here. Great play by Ferranda to get out of the inning and help out Petrick. We'll, we will be right back. What does it That's what it means to be a PBA student athlete. Back to the second game of this series that just happened. Sailfish couldn't really get anything going on offense. Only four hits last game for the Sailfish in a tough game two loss, losing 10 to two last game earlier today at 12 o'clock. So Machado stepping into the box. The second baseman here for the Sailfish drops a bun. Does not have contact on it, strike one. Yeah, Machado, he's in because his defense is crazy. He's got amazing hands out there at second base. They'll be challenged to find him committing an error. And the kid's a switch hitter as well, batting over 500 early in the year. And he strikes out looking, watches it go by him. Now batting for your Saw two strikes so early and then watches the third one go by. Backwards K here early for Gonzalez. Has to get the confidence going. As Lopez steps up for the Sailfish. 
Lopez has been quite a player so far. Batting well over 300 for the fish so far. Shot to the shortstop. Shortstop fires it over. Great play, great throw to stay with it. So two down early here for the Sailfish. Shortstop makes a great play. Urso, great play. Nunez and Urso couldn't figure out who was going to get that one. Nunez ultimately fell off of it, let it go to Urso. Urso deep to back there in the pocket of shortstop, fired it. As Ferranda steps up to the box here, lets one go outside. The lefty two-way player lets one go in the middle to even the count up at one and one. Yeah, Ferranda... He wants to get a hit so badly. He's grounded out four times today, trying to change that narrative. Let's one go inside. Tampa ultimately dominating the series so far and ultimately dominating the Sailfish all in general as the Sailfish are just six and 34 all time against the Spartans. Yeah, that is a crazy stat line. I believe it's 10 now in a row that Tampa has won. Yeah, that's correct as Ferranda strikes out swinging. So quick one, two, three inning for that's Gonzalez. We will be right back University with the top of the Tampa second here Sailfish. on the Sailfish Zero. Sports Network. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. We are back here for the top of the second. Petrick getting ready to face the Spartans for the bottom half of their order. Spartans were able to tally across one run on the sacrifice fly early in the first. Petrick, so far this year, he's pitched to a 6.3 ERA, but he has taken two wins and only one loss. His offense carried him in both of his first starts. They're gonna have to do the same here. As he, as he throws a strike outside, clips the box. Blue likes that call there, strike. Strike two here for Petrick. Good off speed there. Great breaking ball there. Patrick gets to the set, fires, foul tip there for Garbato. As he actually got a piece of it, bad throw, but Figueroa stays with it, gets on the bag. Now batting the first baseman, number 25. So it was a drop AJ third Gosnow. strike. I thought there was an actual piece of it. Obviously it went off the catcher. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen, drop third strike. And they wind up getting the out there as Petrick does get the strikeout on the drop third strike. So Doskow, the first baseman here for the Spartans, stepping in. Yeah, he hit a home run and had a double last game. So he's hot right now. Hit one out over the left center field fence right above the Sailfish Baseball logo. Doskow actually with three home runs on this season as he hits it right over to shortstop. 
Casaleggio fires over to Figueroa, makes the play. Now batting for the Spartans, the right fielder, number 19. Doscow is a very talented Camilo. player, though, with three home runs on the season so far. Spartans, very talented team with eight team home runs as a team. So they, they like to use the long ball, and that works to their advantage. And they're a lot more than just a long ball, too. They can run, they can pitch. They're just an all around good baseball team. Kumbo steps at the left. Hexel, great play. So we will be right back here in a short moment as Texel makes a great defensive play. And we will see you in the bottom of the second on the Sailfish Sports Network. Well, it's been a busy day of college football. Let's get caught up on the action. First up, Alabama. This play right here shows you eating chicken will do for you. Lots of broken tackles the here. It's the chicken. No Today idea. We have ice cold Joey Galloway is here with chicken predictions. With chips, candy, My what? Touchdown dogs, chicken. So okay, are we filming right now? Chicken, 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 chicken. What is going on? I don't know. Oh, that was weird. No management. Start your game day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick-fil-A. Every Sailfish team aims to look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to AdPro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one-stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com. And we are back here on the Sailfish Sports Network for the bottom of the second. We are getting ready to get this underway. Gonzalez, great game so far out of him. Two strikeouts. No hits allowed. He looks to stay hot here for the Spartans. Leading off the bottom of the second for your Sailfish. Oh God, the designated hitter, number five, Giovanni Lorenzo. So the designated hitter, Giovanni Lorenzo, stepping up here for the Sailfish. Lorenzo, big part of this offense to be at the DH here. Obviously says something about his bat. His coach believes in him and believes in his bat. Got some details on Skylar Gonzalez, the pitcher for Tampa. He's sporting a 2.25 ERA right now through eight innings, and he's also got eight strikeouts. Swing there by Lorenzo, makes it an 0-1 count, makes it a 1-1 count. Foul ball over to the first baseman, ground ball. Makes it one, two for Gonzalez. It's high and outside. Two, two count here for Lorenzo. Same spot, strike three. Lorenzo didn't, didn't like that the call earlier, said something to the ump. Pedro Figueroa, the first baseman, stepping up here for the Sailfish. Last, at last game, went one for three with a double, providing to one of the only four of the Sailfish hits last game. So ball high and outside here for Gonzalez. Figueroa just lets one go by him. Gets a piece of that, makes his count 1-1. One, one. Check swing, does he go? Looks down, ump says no. So the first base umpire says he does not go. Great job by Figueroa to not go around. Makes it 2-1 in this count. Gonzalez, 2-2 two -two count with a strike on the outside of the plate. Gonzalez, his pace is pretty fast. Absolutely, all of these Tampa pitchers have been moving at a blistering pace. Outside, full count here. It's almost like Gonzalez doesn't even get set. Like he just goes straight to it. Makes you wonder if Tampa pitchers are training with the pitching clock. As Figueroa gets it over to, to 
Everything's it's hard, sorry. For the sailfish so far this year. Play into foul territory. Great play there by the first baseman, Doskow. He's been locked in here for the Spartans. Makes a great play in foul territory. And that will retire the sailfish in the bottom of the second. So the sailfish not able to get a hit across Gonzalez. Doing his thing here early at the Rubin Park. We will be back on the Sailfish Sports Network. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Sailfish Booster Club. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Sailfish Athletics. With the Central Operations Center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Bus is who our Sailfish teams turn to for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com. And we are back here for the top of the third inning. This matchup between the first matchup, 11 to 3. You'd say that was a trendsetter. For sure. So Gutcher stepping up here at the DH position. Strike for Patrick. 0 1 count here. Strike two. Great pitch there by Petrick. Inside pitch, clips the strike zone. Petrick gets set, fires outside, ball one. Takes a bad hop. Machado tries to make that play. Gets out there to center field. So ground ball up the middle. Takes a bad hop off the pitcher's mound. Machado almost makes the play but cannot get it done. As it is a base hit there for Gutcher. The Spartans DH. So Saladino comes up. The lefty. The lefty left fielder. Runner on first here. Saladino takes one down the middle, makes it 0-1. Petrick fired one down, right down the middle of the strike zone. Great pitch there. Just low there for Patrick, so 1-1 one -one count here. Gutcher on first here. Takes off. Fires it down. Bad play. Great backup by Machado to be there. Stolen base there by Gutcher. Yeah, we, we mentioned last game we saw Sean Williams was behind the dish. Almost threw out two runners. 
Definitely threw out one, but Housen air mails the throw there. Housen not able to get that one down. It's a 2-1 count here for Petrick. Runner in scoring position for the Spartans. Bunt down, tries to sacrifice over, but it does go foul. So 2-2 two -two count here. Can pretty much eliminate the bunt factor here. Saladino laid down the bunt. Good bunt, but just rolled over foul. So that's unfortunate for him. 2-2 two -two count for Petrick. To Machado, Machado dives out again as a run will score here on the single for Saladino. Brings in Gutcher. And it's 2 0. Center fielder number eight, Spartans. Jordan Malala. Yeah, Gutcher was right in the middle of things last game. I believe he got the first RBI of the day. And then later in the game, he hit an opposite field double, which played it another one. And this time he comes around and scores the second run of this game. Gutcher two for three last game with those two RBIs as you included. Great series for him. Strike the outside. Spartans an overall team that gets on base with a .416 on base percentage as he drops a bunt to the left side, cannot get it fair, 0-2 but they have a .416 on base percentage. Getting on base a lot here. It's hard for other teams to stop the runs from getting in after they get on base. Steal, runner steals. Saladino tries to get into scoring position on a hit and run play. Lala and Saladino obviously got the sign from the coach for the hit and run. Foul ball there though, so that play does not work. So 0-2 here, great position for Petrick as he fires it over to Saladino. And Figueroa at first cannot get Saladino at first. You know what I just noticed Joe, Matty Warren didn't start this game. Hopefully his injury didn't flare up again. Inside pitch, makes it 1-2. And that is true, I noticed that too. Matty Warren, he did not start this game. He had a very good game for the Sailfish. Last game, he, had, he went two for four. Very big part as Patrick checks him over at first again. Not able to get him, but Matty Warren, two for four last game. Unfortunately, was injured. And maybe that is keeping him out of this one. Going, Housen fires it, gets him out. Great throw by Housen to hose him down. Absolutely gun him down behind the plate. Yeah, good execution there from Housen. Didn't overthrow at all. Threw right into the runner, allowing, I believe it was Machado, to lay the tag down. And just beautiful stuff from Housen behind the plate. That's the second caught stealing on the day for the Sailfish. So an absolute laser by Housen behind the plate. Gonna let these runners know that you're not gonna be able to steal on him. Strike three for Petrick. The Spartans must have thought with their success stealing early that Housen did not have it. But he definitely has the cannon behind the plate and he is not afraid to show it. So two outs here. Earhart gets into the box for the Spartans. No man on. Ball outside. Drops the bunt down, tries to get it on, fires it across. No, he doesn't, keeps it himself. And Blair, he makes a decision that he was not going to get that one across in time. He didn't even want to risk the error. Yeah, Earhart. He kind of struggled last game, but gets himself a bunt single here. That'll get some confidence back. Orso steps into the box here. The shortstop made a great play early as Petrick steps off. 
and checks the runner at first. It's the coach's son, Joe. High. And he's going to leave him for a ball. So Urso, coach's son here, in the three hole playing shortstop. Can't make that up any better as he takes a strike down the middle. Love to see it. One, one. Well, he hits it out to the left field and he will have a single. Great hit for Urso. Just deals with the middle, middle fastball there, drives it out over the infield, dunks it in front of Texel for a single. Two men aboard now. Three, yeah, two men aboard. Nunez stepping up here. Petrick finding himself in a little trouble again with two outs. Two earned runs on five hits so far. Spartans trying to get on him early, but I'd say he's held up so far pretty well. Yeah, I mean, this is about to be expected from Petrick. He's not going to overpower you with his stuff. He plays to contact like a lot of these selfish pitchers do. He just has to rely on solid defense behind him. For sure. His defense needs to get him out here if there's something in play here. So Nunez looks at another ball. 2-0 count. Runners on second and first for the Spartans. From the stress position, he is set. Petrick. So that's outside. Three outside pitches here makes the count three and zero. Oh. Petrick not trying to give Nunez anything down the middle or anything. Uh, three zero oh count. I don't know if he's just gonna let him go here. Great. Nunez, a great hitter, has the base to give him. And there is a strike called high. Nunez thought that was going to be a ball four. Got ready to walk down. Yeah, oh. Nunez is about to be unleashed here on this pitch, I think. Nunez, three for four last game, so they're obviously pitching around him. Give Nunez thought he was walked again, strike two. Umpire calls him back. Throws the bat, it was for sure that he had the walk there. Umpire did not agree with him. Nunez though, three for four last game, very hot. Makes it a three, two count though. So for pitching around him, I mean, he really thought he was gonna get a walk. Now he's in the count, fighting away pitches. I think Nunez was just looking for the walk. Yeah. Finds himself twice he was looking for the walk, but now he's got to dig back in there and battle. Petrick in control now. He's just got to blow something past him here. So power on power here in the 3-2 count. Two outs here. This would be a very big pitch here for the Sailfish if they can blow it by him. As they do, strike three for Petrick as he's hype, walking off the field. Great pitch. And great way to stay resilient by Petrick. Was running into some problems there, but stays grounded and gets out of it. And we'll be back here for the bottom of the third on the Sailfish Sports Network. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Selfish Booster Club. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Selfish Athletics. With the Central Operations Center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Bus is who our Selfish teams turn to for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com. And we are back here for the bottom of the third. Tampa was able to get one across in the top of the third. 
Sailfish looking to bounce back and find a run of their own. Game is definitely not out of reach yet. Sailfish can get something going, they can take control of this game. Gonzalez, though, still on the mound doing his thing. No earned runs, three strikeouts, no hits, two innings pitched. Hopefully the Sailfish can break through on that. Mikey Casaleggio stepping up here, the shortstop. Had a great play earlier in the first inning. Casaleggio looking to be the first man for the Sailfish to break Gonzalez as he tries to lay down a bunt. Cannot do it. 0-1 count here. Casaleggio took three strikeouts last game. He's the leader on the team for the amount of strikeouts. He's trying to put something in play here, but he's already in no two hole. Yeah, finds himself in a worry very early in his at bat. Strike three, swinging. So a K there for Gonzalez. Leaving Davis Blair to come up here for the Sailfish. The right fielder, uh, the right fielder. The third baseman, great player here. Had the great play on the bunt earlier. Fired it across right to Figueroa and got him in time. So he has a great arm in the hole on the hot corner. Yeah, he absolutely does. He struggled last year and he's batting just above 200 so far this year. So he's seen limited playing time. Sends it out to right field as the catch is made by Kumbo in right field. So the Sailfish again, not able to find anything. Two outs in the bottom of the third. Texel stepping in, the left fielder for today. Very high at his head. High and outside there, 2-0. So no base runners here for the Sailfish. Looking to be the first base runner, that's fair. Texel gets it right up the line and he's gonna be in there for a double. So breakthrough for the Sailfish, finally gets something going here. Texel, the nine bat, the nine hole, coming up with an extra base hit. Getting hits in the least ways that they expected. You know, Texel, he's always had a big role to play on this team. We saw him come off the bench last year a bunch of times, get some hits in some key spots. And now freshman Elias Machado goes to work, see if he can cash him in. Machado stepping up to bat here. Strike one, swinging. The heat on that pitch, just too much for Machado. Gonzalez bringing it. Let's up his first hit, so the perfect game bid is now over. He was shoving though. Strike two, swinging for Machado. Yeah, Machado looks off balance right now. He's gotta keep his front shoulder in. Obviously, Gonzalez's stuff is just too hot for him. He cannot keep up with it. His balance is not even on, but he actually gets a piece of it down to the first base foul line. Just trying to catch a piece of that off speed. Trying to catch that off speed if he can but he's just blowing it by him. Gonzalez with his 31st pitch of the night so far. Yeah, it's very limited spots where you can sit on the off speed here. You really have to know the pitcher to anticipate that. So the Sailfish, overall one for nine in that bats today. One man on, and it just came earlier as Texel steps up, gets himself in scoring position. Ken Machado get him through inside pitch. Machado stayed in there, didn't get out of the way. Trying to take one for the team maybe. 
They probably have ice. Absolutely, they've got ice, Joe. Machado, team player. Coach loves to see that. 2-2 two, two count. Machado up the middle. Great hit for Machado. That will score one. Oh, save at the plate. So Machado gets him through. Great throw by the Spartans. Great throw there by Lalak. Absolute cannon. Close play at the plate. Not able to get the tag on is, is Garvado. So Garvito not able to get the tag on. And Lala just absolutely ho throws a cannon in there from center. You know, honestly, I didn't think that would even be a close play at home, but it ended up being very close. But regardless, Machado, RBI and a single to his name. Yeah, me too. I just did not think that, that he was going to get through there, but he got that very close. But the Sailfish ultimately get their first run of the day in a 2-1 game. Checks him at first, close at first, but safe. Yeah, wise to keep an eye on Machado. He's got significant speed over there. Could definitely steal a bag, put himself in scoring position. Lopez inside. 1-1 one, one count here. So as Caleb said, speed on first. Definitely want to get him into scoring position. Trying to get any runner into scoring position any way they can. So stealing a base would be huge here. As he turns it into left field, but it's just foul. So he pulls it over to left, turned in on it. Great piece of contact there. Would have been a great base hit there for the Sailfish, but ultimately goes foul. So unlucky there. Outside, close call, even better call by the blue to call that a ball, because it was. It was very close, great framing by Garvito. Had, had all of us up here fooled with that good framework behind the plate, but not the umpire. Checks back on Machado, safe there. Oh, that was there. way too close, that was way too close. Machado, gotta keep his wits about him over there. Can't make the last out on the base paths. Gonzalez has a great pickoff move. Very fast pitcher. Gets all of his stuff done at a very good pace. As a hitter, it's very hard to time. Very hard, very hard to like tell like what he's gonna do. Joe, so you know how the pitch clock is gonna be instituted in Major League Baseball. It's gonna be next year it'll be instituted at this level. So these pitchers are already training for that. Hi and outside to make it a 3-2 count here. So here we go, 3-2 count. Runners are moving no matter what. Two outs in the bottom of the third. Sailfish ultimately able to get one across in the bottom of the third. He's going, and there is a shot out to left. It is deep, but it is caught there by Saladino. So great play there by Saladino to stay with it in the sun. But the Sailfish were able to get their first run here. Your score after Texel was a great double to start it off for them. The they get their Sailfish first run across. Texel is the first run. Machado gets the RBI. The Sailfish make it two to one here. We will be right back on the Sailfish Sports Network. I don't just
We are back here for the top of the fourth on the Sailfish Sports Network. Sailfish able to get their first run across on the board. Two hits, one run here for the Sailfish compared to the Spartans. Five hits and two runs. Leading off the fourth so inning two one game. the Tampa Spartans. The catcher number 14, Santiago Garavito. Garavito stepping into the box here. The catcher for the Spartans. Out to right field. Lopez not able to make the play. So a blooper to right field falls for Garvito. He gets a single. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Lopez was positioned correctly for that play. He got on his horse, gave it his best effort over towards the line, but that's just a bloop single there. So the Spartans get a man on for their most powerful hitter, Doskow. Their main objective is to definitely get some runners on base for this guy. Three home runs on the season so far. You know, last game, Sean Williams gunned down a guy while uh, Doskow was in the box, and it made it a solo home run instead of a two-run home run. So fly out to the first base side. Great play by Figueroa. Definitely got to get him out any chance you have. Now batting the right fielder, number 19, EJ Combo. So Combo stepping in for the Sailfish, uh, for the Spartans. Patrick on the mound for the Sailfish still having a great outing through four so far. Setting up two runs through four is great against the number four ranked team. So Combo lets one go by him. 0-1 count. So a foul tip there. Make it 0-2 here. Fifty pitches on the day for Petrick through four. So great pace here for them. High ball to make it one two. Looking for the shutout pitch there, not able to get it. So the sailfish in a two one game, just like the game that they were in Friday, as it is a ball to make it 2-2. The game Friday, Sailfish were the first to get on the board, unlike this game. Lopez would re reach base on third, would reach third base on an error by the Tampa defense. Texel would bring him in as strike three for Patrick. Sends Combo down, swinging. That brings up the designated Bringing up the DH. Danny Gutcher. Danny Gutcher coming in for the Spartans. But Texel, again, contributing again Friday and today for the RBIs, for the runs against the Spartans. Tampa on Friday stayed with the Sailfish all game, ultimately breaking down the game towards the final moments to win 2-1 and take the first game of the series. So 0-1 count here to Gutcher. Checks him at first, Patrick does, does not get him. Gutcher was behind the plate last game. This time he gets the nod at the DH spot. Coach Joe Urso liking what he sees from his bat. Here we go, play here for Blair. Steps up, great charge, great stretch by Figueroa to make the play and retire the side.
Matt the three Miranda leading here, off here. If anyone needs a base knock right now, it's Matt Ferranda. Ferranda in a little slump right here, looking to see if he can get himself out of it. 0 for 1 earlier with a strikeout. It's 1 0 count. Finds one that's not appealing to him. Takes one down the middle, hacks at it. Great swing, not able to ultimately connect with it. 1-1. One, one. Takes one, Apo Taco. Foul down the third base line. Ferranda would have loved to have an opposite, opposite field single. One, two, count, strike three. Miranda strikes out, swinging over two for him today with two strikeouts. Lorenzo, the DH, coming up. Gonzalez with his fifth strikeout of the day. Strike down the middle. Oh, one count here. Play out to Earhart. Earhart, the second baseman, gets it over to Doscow. There's two quick outs here for the Celtics. Pedro Figueroa, the first baseman, stepping up here at the five hole for the Sailfish. Looking to get their first hit of this inning. 0 for 1 today is Figueroa with a strikeout. Uh, with a ground out, the second baseman, my apologies. 1-1 one, one count here. Figueroa fouls one back. In play here, kind of. It is not in play. Foul ball to the fans out in the stands. So souvenir there for a Sailfish fan. As Pedro Figueroa cares about the fans. He absolutely does. <laughs> A one two count, two outs here for Gonzalez. Looking for the pitch. Figueroa gets a nice piece of it to the left fielder. Saladino comes in, gets under it, and ends the bottom of the fourth. So a one two three inning for Gonzalez. Takes care of business here in the bottom of the fourth, bringing us to the top of the fifth on the Sailfish Sports Network. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Here for the top of the fifth, Petrick still on the mound, shoving early here. Four innings pitch for him, six hits allowed, two earned runs, one walk and four strikeouts. 56 pitches through five. The pace, as I talked about earlier, perfect for Coach Bottenfield. Leaving off the top of the fifth for the University and you know, of Tampa that Spartans. That really, number like, 10, this is all you can ask Nico from your pitcher, especially when you're facing the number four team in the nation. Like, the offense should be able to work with this. He's only allowed two runs, but he has to keep it at that. 
Absolutely. I mean, as a coach, you can't ask for anything better from, from one of your starters as he faces Saladino here. Saladino, early foul into the count. So Saladino actually just ended the bottom of the fourth with a great play out in left field. But Patrick has done everything he can to keep this game at winning distance for the Selfish. Check swing, looks, strike. 0-2 oh, count here. First base umpire thinks that it's a strike. I think it's a strike. Caleb thinks it's a strike. And we all mutually agree. So 0-2 oh, count. Patrick also thought it was a strike. Strike. Just low there on the breaking ball. Down the middle, but just low. So 1-2 count here for Patrick, looking for his fifth strikeout of the day. High and outside, the ump does not like that one. Man, oh man, Hausen was getting ready to throw that one around the horn, but instead, Patrick's gotta throw another pitch. Selfish dugout thought that one was a strike. Blue wants a 2-2 count instead. Foul ball down the third base line. Saladino facing a few pitches here. Up the middle to center field. Line drive center field to Miranda. Miranda stays in front of it, makes the play, cuts it off. Only a single there for the Spartans. So Lala stepping up. The center fielder had made a great play in center field earlier, almost getting him out at home. So great arm at center field and great contact out of the number one hole. Great play by Petrick, runs it to the mound. Shoves him away. Petrick and Lala talking. Bala gets in Petrick's way. Petrick took exception to number that. The second baseman, number two, Drew Earhard. Petrick sits him down. So Lala has to go take a trip to the bench. He didn't get on base. And he needs his boy Earhard to get to get his to get his boy Saladino home from second. The tensions rise here at Jake Rubin Park. You kind of love to see it, honestly. Some fight out of these selfish players getting everybody riled up everybody's got a little bit of adrenaline pumping now selfish feel like they've been dominated they want to take a stand they want to steal this game they want to steal this game against the number four ranked team joe Urso here, still chirping down the line here he doesn't like what he saw at all so coach Urso not liking that but a win here they need it selfish need to show all the competitive fire they have they've been dominated these past two days. So a uh, shot out, Earhart gets it over. Texel with a great diving play to left field. Gets it over to left field. Texel tracks that down with a great sliding dive. Yeah, Texel is a really adept outfielder. We saw him the game on Friday. He made two catches up against the wall out in left field saving extra base hits, and now he makes a great sliding grab to rob a hit there. This has really been his series. Texel's been a part of every game for the Sailfish. So Urso steps up here, the shortstop. 0-1. Oh so Urso, the shortstop. Strike, swinging. Urso got a piece of that, but Hausen was able to keep that in the glove. 0-2, oh, two, two outs. Gets to the stretch here. Petrick, big pitch. Urso takes it the other way, foul. Patrick might have unlocked a little bit more gas in the tank here. 
after that altercation down at first. Seems like he's coming with a little bit extra velocity, a little bit extra movement on his braking stuff. So perhaps that was a really good thing for him. Saladino stuck there at second, looking for somebody to bring him in. Urso smacks one to left field and it is deep and it is gone. Jay Urso smacks a home run deep. The shortstop, the three hitter, comes up huge for the Spartans and breaks this game open. Four to one for the Spartans. Urso, coach's son, comes up huge for the Spartans. He is hyped. And Petrick, all the, all the hype that he had was just taken out of him. Yeah, that was, that was a no doubter off the bat. You can, you can tell when a home run is hit by the sound of the bat oftentimes, and that thing was just, that was a laser. That wasn't even a lazy fly ball. That thing got out of here in a hurry. Strike one here for Nunez. Urso breaks the game open. We were just talking about Urso and how big of a factor that he could be at that three hole. So one, one here for Nunez. Got a three run game. Up the middle here for Machado. Machado in front of it, gets it over to Figueroa. Figueroa can't, comes off the base, makes a terrible error. Figueroa cannot stay on the base, takes his foot off. Yeah, Machado, I don't think he charged that ball enough. He had to rush the throw at the end, and that resulted in a high throw, which pulled Figueroa off the bag. So the inning continues. So a nightmare with two outs. Petrick was almost out of this. But this has just turned into a nightmare for the Sailfish. So Garavato steps in here. The catcher. Down the line, down the third base line. Single here for Garavato. Spartans have a man at the corners. Now batting for the Spartans, the first baseman, number 25, EJ Doskow. So two men on for Doskow. A powerful hitter, three home runs on the year. Selfish definitely don't want to leave runners on for this man. Two outs in the top of the fifth. So four earned runs here for Patrick. Yeah, that's just unfortunate. I said how Patrick, it seemed like he had unlocked a new strength, new power in his pitches, and then the next pitch, Urso leaves the yard. There's a shot in the gap here for Doskow. One run will score, and it will be 5-1 Tampa. So this nightmare with two outs is just not ending here for Petrick. Brings up the right fielder, number 19, EJ Kumbo. So Kumbo stepping up here for the Spartans. As a bo Coach Bonfield steps out and thinks that there will be a pitching change, there will be Petrick coming out of the game, going 4.2 innings, when up nine hits, four earned runs, four strikeouts. So Petrick did everything he can to keep this a game, ultimately letting up five earned runs. Your attention, please. 73 pitches pitch made this 5-1. But we will be right back Lobo. here after this pitching change on the Selfish Sports Network. 
Well, it's been a busy day of college football. Let's get caught up on the action. First up, Alabama. This play right here shows what eating chicken will do for you. Lots of broken tackles here. It's the chicken. No idea what you're talking about. Joey Galloway is here with chicken predictions. My what? Touchdown chicken. Okay, are we filming right now? Chicken, 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 chicken. What is going on? I don't know. Oval coming in first combo lefty on lefty matchup here runners on second and first for the Spartans two outs here in this inning Petrick wanted to get out of it just ultimately couldn't high and outside here Right down the middle. 2 1 count here. Louisville pitcher from the stretch. Comes set. Checks the runner at second. Swing and a miss for combo. 2 2 count here for the Sailfish. Strike three, swinging for the sailfish.
52 pitches through five. So the catcher, Housen, stepping up here for the sailfish. Trying, somebody's trying to break through on Gonzalez. Hopefully seeing him a few times. You see him, you get a feel of what he has. Somebody's got to break through here, get something rolling for the sailfish. It's just when you get beaten by a team twice in a row, it's hard to come back on the third game, but sailfish need to find the mental fortitude. 2-0 count here early for Housen, the catcher. There's a hit into the gap here by Housen. Staying one as he takes a turn. It's a great hit there by Housen to get it into the gap here. Casaleggio stepping up the shortstop, 24. Stepping in here. Oh for one here today with a strikeout in the third. Let's go, two four. Let's go, Mikey's due for one here. Inside and low. One one for the Spartans. Gonzalez in a one one count. Runner on first. No outs. Strike, swinging for Casaleggio. One, two count here. Close call, ball. So two, two count. Count is tied at two. Strike three, swinging for Casaleggio. So Gonzalez picks up his sixth strikeout of the day. First out of the bottom of the fifth here. Davis Blair stepping in for the Sailfish. Some great plays out of the hot corner for him. Hopefully he gets a nice piece of contact here for the Sailfish. Runner on first, Housen. Ball outside. Strike down the middle. One one count. Two one ball low. Blair with the fly out to right and his at bat earlier today. Zero and one. Foul tip behind the catcher. Makes it two two. Outside, 3-2, count is full. Gonzalez finds himself in a full count here. Runner on first, one out. And that is pimped out deep to left field and that is foul. So Blair Davis, Pimps one foul, just foul. My goodness, folks. That was a great piece of contact. 
would have been a two-run home run, would have really brought the Sailfish back into this one. That just takes the heart out of everybody at the Rubin Park. Absolutely pimp that to left field. Nice bat flip in there and everything. It's looking like Josh, John, Josh Donaldson pimping foul ball home runs. It's really not a good look. And he strikes out looking and a double play for the Spartans. So everything that could have went wrong there just went wrong. A foul, home run, absolutely brutal to see. Awful luck there. And then a double play, strikeout swinging into the, into the caught stealing. Third base coach saying that that was a home run, that was just foul. But the umps ultimately, ultimately rule that foul. Just takes the life out of everybody here at the Rubin. Besides the Spartans, the Spartans come into some good luck. And they get out of the bottom of the fifth unscathed. Five to one still. We will be back on the Sailfish Sports Network. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? So we are back in the top of the six. Just an absolute nightmare two innings for the Sailfish. In the top of the fifth, they let up the two-run home run to Urso. Really blows this game open. Then in the bottom of the fifth, the foul pole takes their two-run home, two home run away. And then just an absolute brutal series of events. Next pitch, strike three looking on the hit and run play. Off he was thrown out at second. The designated hitter, number so just a double play Danny to end Kutcher. the bottom of the fifth to bring us into the top of the sixth. Just a nightmare inning for the Sailfish. The fifth, absolutely brutal to them. But Lavelle back on the mound. one -oh count here for the Sailfish. Strike, 1-1. One, one. Inside pitch there, 2-1 count. So Lavelle, strike right down the middle, 2-2. Two, two. Looper to third base, just foul. So Lovell. Has it 2-2, two, 2-2 two. Two, two count. So Gutcher taking his time to get back into the box. High, 3-2 count. So 
full count here. First batter of this inning. First at batter at the top of the six. Count is full. And it is a grounder to Figueroa. Figueroa, great play there on the ground. Get that out at first. Now batting the left fielder, number 10, Nico Butcher Saladino. It's down. Ground out to Figueroa. Ground out to the first baseman. Saladino comes up to left fielder. Has some good plays earlier. Yeah, these might as well be the fish because the wind has been taken out of their sails. And that, man, that home run in the last half inning that Davis Blair hit that was just a little bit foul, I thought that was going to rejuvenate the sailfish, but just has the opposite effect. Yeah, absolutely brutal. So there's a pop-up to the third base foul line. Blair not able to make that play. 0-2 count early in this at-bat. Finds himself into a quick situation. Saladino. Great day for Saladino, two for two. One RBI. And he gets hit with the pitch while he was swinging. But he's still gonna go down to the first base. So he is going to stay two for two on the day. So Saladino having a great day. So the center fielder, Lala, coming up. The senior, one for two today. With a great throw from center field that almost got the runner tagging for the Selfish's first run. It was a wild pitch. Gets past Housen. So a high fastball gets by Housen. Beats Saladino to steal first. So runners in scoring position for the Spartans. One out here. 1 0 count. So Lovell has a runner. In scoring position. Checks back at Saladino. Throws another one high. So Tampa just doing what they do. Ten hits through six innings here. Five runs. Strike on the outside corner of the plate. Great pitch there by Lovell. Lovell, 2-1 count. Hits him. So Lovell hits two batters in a row. And obviously his control is just not where the shellfish needed to be. I mean, this game is not completely unwinnable. It's a four-run game. The second baseman, yeah, interesting two, to see Drew there's nobody Gerhard. warming in the sailfish bullpen. This is Lovell's inning here. And it looks like he's on his own to get out of it. So two batters hit in a row. Obviously, his control is not there right now. Coach Bonfield is going to keep him in there. He's going to throw a strike down the middle. So Earhart back at the plate here. Urso on deck. Urso with the two-run home run earlier in the fifth. Checks back at the runner at second. Drops a bunt down. 1-1, one, one. so he just takes it back just in the nick of time. This just in, Andrew Sikowski gets up in the bullpen for the Sailfish, so might have an insurance policy for Lovell here. Outside, 
2-1 here. So Erard, the 2-1 count. He's ahead of the count here. He's ahead of the pitcher. And there's a, just gets by Davis Blair as a run will score. Cuts it off. So Erhard, an RBI single. Tampa extends his lead to Tampa, six to one. Stop, number 11, JD Urso. So JD Urso stepping up to bat here. The player of this game. Two for two with a home run and two RBIs. Takes one down the middle. So Louisville challenging him. Throwing it right down the middle. Urso. Just waiting for his pitch. Strike two, oh two. So Urso was waiting for his pitch. He got two. Let's go. And he is now in an 0-2 count. So Urso, a good two-strike hitter as he hit the home run out of a two-strike count as he strikes out looking backwards. K doesn't like the call with the ump, sitting there complaining. Now batting the third baseman, number nine, Anthony Nunez. So Nunez stepping up. Nunez having a great series. Game earlier, he was three for four. So absolute great game by him. So Louisville on the mound, gets a strikeout here. Two outs. So Nunez takes one outside, 1-0. One Bubble has some of the best stuff out of any pitcher on the Sailfish roster. When he's on, he's on, but not looking his sharpest today. 30 pitches out of the bullpen. 1-1 one, one count here. Two strikeouts through one inning. And two hit by pitches on base right now. Looking to weasel his way out of this situation. It's a 1-1 one, one count to Nunez. Nunez takes one right down the middle. Nice breaking ball. 1-2 count here. Two outs, one, two, big pitch, payoff pitch, up high. So two, two. We got twos across the board right now. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two man on. Pitcher has two strikeouts. Full count. So Nunez. Makes this count full. Lovell gets set, three, two, two outs. And there is a walk. So bases are loaded here for the Spartans. Garvito coming up to the plate here. Now batting the catcher number 14, Santiago Garavito. Catcher stepping in, he's got bases loaded. Hit here would really blow this game out of proportion. 
Yeah, it absolutely would. And Ken Bonfield not opting to go to Sikowski here. Looks like he's warmed up in the pen. Inside ball. Just a little too in there. What did you see there, Caleb? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good call. It was a cutter down and in, evaded the zone. Just missed clipping that plate. I've just been calling that inside all day. As he, there's two balls here, so 2-0 two, count here for Louisville. Louisville gets set. Throws a strike down the middle. 2-1 count here. Two one. Global is set. Too high there. Three one count here. Base is loaded here, so a walk will be costly to the ERA. I'm sure Louisville knows that. Doskow on deck here. The best Spartan hitter on deck for bases loaded as he's gonna get bases loaded and a walk is gonna come in. So seven to one for the Spartans and leaves their most potent hitter with the bases loaded, Caleb. Yeah, it looks like Ken Bottenfield's coming out to make a move here. Definitely gonna go to Sikowski against Doskow. Man already has a home run on the day. Hit, it, hit one last game and he's got three ducks on the pond here. We don't wanna give up a grand slam. That's gonna pretty much seal this game if that happens. Doskow, one of the better players here. So it's going to be a pitching change here for the Sailfish. We will be right back on the Sailfish Sports Network. Do you want Sailfish content delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for the Sailfish Scoop at pbasailfish.com to get customized content delivered directly to your email as soon as it's available online. Customize your content to stay current with your favorite teams or get it all to know the latest from all 18 programs. Sign up today for the Sailfish Scoop at pbasailfish.com. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Selfish Booster Club. So pitching change. Innings pitched, 
two hits, two runs allowed, both earned, and three walks last year. His issue was walks, and another walk in this situation would spell another run, but leaving one middle-middle to Doskow could spell much worse. So a strike there, 0-1. Oh, Sikowski, when he's hitting the zone, he's very effective. Only a one a buck eighty-two batting average against. Sikowski in an 0 1 count here. Has Doskow 0 1. 1 1 count. Great stop by Hausen. Great defense behind the plate there to block that ball from going behind and ultimately letting a run score. Yeah, that was a crucial play. Sometimes those kind of plays go unnoticed, but that ball gets bat gets past the backhand of Housen. That's another run for free. So one one count here. Power versus power. Two one count here. For Sikowski. So Zakowski in a 2-1 count here. Now Dasgro's ahead. So 3-1 count here for Doskow. So 3-1, Doskow ahead, of the, ahead in the count here. Base is loaded here. Sikowski does not want to let in the free run. Doskow will walk here and add another RBI to his total this year. So nine RBIs on the year for him. How about the right fielder, number 19? Yeah, it's EJ interesting Kumo. that Bonfield would go to Sikowski, who in the past we know has struggled with control. The base is loaded. Could go to a guy like Nick Adams, who generally can, controls the zone better, but. Combo hits one out into the gap. Sonny, Texas right there, though, makes the play and finally gets them out of the innings. Zakowski comes in for the sailfish, lets in one on the on the walk, and the sailfish Your score after five and a half innings unable to make this game close or keep this game close. 8-1, Spartan. We will be back here for the bottom of the sixth. Well, it's been a busy day of college football. Let's get caught up on the action. First up, Alabama. This play right here shows what eating chicken will do for you. Lots of broken tackles here. It's the chicken. No idea what you're talking about. Joey Galloway is here with chicken predictions. My what? Touchdown chicken. Okay, are we filming right now? Chicken, 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 chicken. What is going on? I don't know. Oh, that was weird. No management. Start your game day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick-fil-A. Every Sailfish team aims to look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to AdPro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one-stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com. So pitching change here for the Spartans. Paul Sullivan comes in here. For Gonzalez, Gonzalez had a great game. Ultimately, just getting the call off, going five full innings. Great day for him. Ultimately, got six strikeouts, four bases on balls. So did everything that coach asked him to do. So Sullivan steps in for Gonzalez. Sullivan on the year, he's got a 1.86 ERA 
so many of these Tampa players have an ERA under two. 212 batting average against, averaging 10.24 strikeouts per game. So Texel stepping up against Sullivan. Just fantastic ERA that you just brought up to us. He's a very good pitcher. Just almost looks like everybody on this Tampa roster is just an absolute stud. Texel lets one go by him. Strike two early, so 0-2. Oh, Sullivan just blowing it by him. So Sullivan has some great velocity on his fastball. Ball low, one, two count here. Sullivan. Shot out to left, but Texel, Texel hits it to the left fielder. Left fielder to left fielder, but he makes the play. The man, number 27, the second baseman, Elias Machado. So Elias Machado stepping up for the bat here for the Sailfish. One RBI for him today. He has the only RBI for the Sailfish. One for two for him. Machado fouls one off again. Oh, two count here. One out for the Spartans. And Machado strikes out looking backwards. K for Sullivan. Sailfish just can't seem to get any offense at all this whole series. Yeah, it's been tough. The only four total runs scored so far in the entire series. Well, P steps in. Especially doesn't help when you're getting your home runs taken away from you by the foul pole. Well, P steps into the uh, plate here. The right fielder hits it over to right field. Is it fair? Will it drop? No, and it's not fair. It does drop. So 0 2, two outs. Lopez 0 2. Strike three for the Spartans. Sullivan liked that one. As soon as he threw it, he knew that that was going for him. He is hype walking off the field.
if Coach Bot uses any pinch hitters down the stretch here once the Sailfish come to bat again. People like Matt Ferranda have been out there for hours on end. Get the get the freshman like Ben Green in there on the outfield. Ben Green, a freshman outfielder that steps in there from time to time for heads like Ferranda and people like that. Very useful. Coach Bonfield loves to use Ben Green out there in the outfield. Zakowski comes, fires. 0-2 oh, count here. So Zakowski trying to bring his stuff here. He's not out of it yet. Nor are the Sailfish. Down seven. Top of the seventh. Down seven. Zakowski gets set. Fires. Strike three. So it gets him looking. I mean, gets him swinging. Zakowski looking around at his infield. The left fielder, throwing the ball 10, around. Nico but Saladino steps in for the Spartans. Saladino having a great game so far for the Spartans. Saladino, two for two so far. He has a, two singles, an RBI, and he was, he was hit by a pitch. 0-1, but Sikowski throwing his best stuff here to him. That last batter was a great way to bounce back for Sikowski, get some momentum rolling for himself here. Saladino takes one inside. Ump doesn't it like that one. 1-1 one, one count. The story of this game is just the Sailfish not able to get things going on offense. Three for 20 overall in at-bats. They have three hits and 20 plate appearances so far through seven innings. Outside, ball. Oh, and high and inside, and he is, Saladino will reach base freely again. He was taxed for that one, though, oh high God, in, the inside. The They're going to take the base on for free. Might as well get taxed. So he was hit high and inside, no free bases. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. Zukowski comes with the strikeout and then hits the next batter, just loses control. So Lala, the center fielder, up again, one for two today. Some sacrifice, some a sacrifice, and a hit by pitch, and a single, and a strikeout, and the third. So he's been all over the place today for the Spartans as he hits one out there to Ferranda. Ferranda making a good play, tracks it down, sun in his face, but he still makes the play. So great play out there in center by Ferranda. In the second baseman, number two, Drew. Yeah, Earhart. great way to range over to his right. That sun definitely coming, becoming a factor as it goes down behind us here in the broadcast booth. The uh, Jake Rubin Park. The sun will be in the eyes of the defense very shortly. So it can Arab. become an issue even for the pitcher. So Arab steps into the box here. He's having a good day. Two for three. Stealing, Housen was not able to get the good throw down as there's an error. The Spartans are going to take two bases instead of one here. Saladino steals two bases and he gets himself on the corner. That's unfortunate. It looks like it just hit the foot of the runner or maybe hit off of Machado's foot and just caromed out into the outfield out of the reach of anybody, allows for extra base to be taken. So Saladino finds himself corner to corner in just a blink of an eye. Zikowski lets a shot go out to the right fielder. Great play by Lopez to end the mm -hmm. inning. So Sikowski gets out of that unscathed, does not let up any runs. Keeps the game the same way for the Sailfish in the bottom of the seventh to scrape up some offense. We'll be back here on the Sailfish Sports Network.
I don't just Every sailfish team aims to look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to AdPro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one-stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com. Seventh inning, the University of Tampa 8, your sailfish 1. So we are back here in the bottom of the seventh. Ferranda stepping up to the battered box for the Sailfish. Sullivan back on the, on the bump for Tampa. Sullivan was doing his thing. Two strikeouts through one inning. Ten pitches. Ferranda gets another at bat here. Down seven for the Sailfish. Ferranda has been playing all day. Coach Bonfield. Wants him to get out, try to get out of his slump. Ferranda not able to get, not able to get contact on the ball at all this series. Foul tip into the bat, caught by the catcher. 0-2 count. Garvito. So, so Ferranda fouls one off. 0-2 count here. Ferranda fouls one over to the first base side on the ground. It's just foul. Sullivan strikes him out. Ferranda goes down again. So Lorenzo, the DH, stepping in. That's one go right down the middle. Lorenzo fouls one over. So strike three. Sullivan sits down on another sailfish. Sullivan just doing his thing here. Four strikeouts. Pedro Figueroa steps up for the sailfish. Sullivan slider gets in there. Great pitch there by Sullivan. 0-1. Oh, Just missed the outside corner. Pedro Figueroa gets it over to Urso. Urso fires it across, makes the play. So the bottom.
here in the game with a single, two for two, to, two for three today. The Spartans, the shortstop, number 11, J.D. Erso. Erso. Inside, Sikowski. 1 and 0. Oh. Urso deep to center to Ferranda. Ferranda doesn't have to move much. One out. Yeah, this has to be a shutdown inning from Sikowski. The Selfish have six outs to work with. Technically, you're never out of a game of baseball until the final out is recorded. We saw the New York Mets last year came back from seven runs down in the ninth inning to pull off a comeback against the Phillies. This could be the Sailfish here tonight. Sikowski throwing balls in the dirt. Nunez is just going to let that one go nine times out of ten. Nunez over two after going three for four in the last game. Not able to find any offense in this game. The third game of the series. They're leading the team in hits last game. High by Sikowski, 2-0. 2-1. There's a foul ball going out of play left side and is out of play. So 2-2 two -two count. Strike three for Sikowski. That Good stuff. Two quick outs here for Sikowski. Looks like could be a new pitcher coming in for the Spartans after the conclusion of this half inning. Dalton Ross, the right-handed side armor, warming up in the bullpen. For Garvito steps in. The, the catcher. Let's one go outside. Last game, the Sailfish only scored once the new pitcher entered the game. Couldn't put up anything against the starter. Shot out to left field, just going foul. Starter last game for the Spartans was able to actually go seven innings, one hit. His name is Thruman. He went seven innings, one hit. He has a four and one record on the season. He's just a great player for the Spartans. Seven innings with one hit. That's just an absolute phenomenal performance last game. Sikowski fires one in. Strike swinging, one, two. Vito pops one up to Machado or Figueroa. Figueroa gets ran into by Garvito. An interference, baseline interference, and they're fighting. On all those involved, in Division Two, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours.
So we are back here at the Rubin Park. Umpires discussing what they need to after Tempers Flair. This intense three game series going on between the three team of the two teams. The three matchups are very intense. And that's what happens when you play hard baseball. Doesn't matter what the score is, both teams are giving it everything they have. Figueroa leaving his emotions out there. Interference, that's the end of the eighth inning. Your score, eight to one. So the, so the eighth is now ended. That is an automatic out on baseline interference. Figueroa obviously had the pop-up waiting to be caught in his glove. The runner just, just went into him. Garvito just winded up going into him. So it's going to be an auto out. And the top of the eighth is going to be over. We'll be back in the bottom of the eighth. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Sailfish Booster Club. Do you want Sailfish content delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for the Sailfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com to get customized content delivered directly to your email as soon as it's available online. Customize your content to stay current with your favorite teams or get it all to know the latest from all 18 programs. Sign up today for the Sailfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com. So we're back here in the bottom of the eighth. Things are getting intense here at the Rubin Park, but nothing is as intense as this pitching change for the Spartans. Dalton Ross coming in to finish the game for the Spartans. That is probably the most important thing that's going on right now. The pitching change is going on. Coach talking to the umpires about what has just went on, what has inspired on the field. But many things are going to happen like that after you play the same team over and over again. Both teams are almost sick of each other at this point. Sailfish have to feel like they've been dominated on every game that they played. Your attention, please. And the now Spartans, for the Spartans. I don't know what that was for, but that was that was just tempers flaring. And we're going to we resume the things in the bottom of the eight. The umpire getting ready to start it. So 
So the catcher gets down, squats down. The umpire gets ready, calls play. We are resuming here. Ross spires a strike in there. The side armor, as Caleb said earlier. Daniel Foster is up in the bullpen for the sailfish. One one count here. Down the middle there. Strike two, one two here. Housing in a one two count. No outs here. Housing up the middle, up to the second baseman. Good play by Airhead to stay with it. He, he's out. So great play by Daskow. Stay with it on the base, recover, get the throw, and then recover himself and get and step on the base. Get the ultimately get the out. Casaleggio, the shortstop for the sailfish coming up to the dish here. Ross fires a strike right down the middle. Casaleggio has a chance to run it out. Great play. He's safe. So Airhead playing like an Airhead. Sitting back on the ball for two seconds. Forgets to charge in. Ultimately charges in too late and leaves the opportunity for a single, an infield single on the board for Casaleggio. And finally, Casaleggio gets a hit. So, I mean, even an infield single go miles to increase your confidence down the line. It could even affect his confidence going into the next game. So Blair taking know that he's a reliable player. Two RBIs in this series, but has a double here in this game. And he has a great and he has a great diving play that he made earlier. Strike. So 0 2 here very fast. 1 2 count here. Ross. Strike three. Ross picking up his second strikeout of the end. And he sets them down. Top of the ninth here. Final homestand of this game coming up here. Me and Caleb will be back here with you for the, sail for the ninth on the Sailfish Sports Network. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Watching a cow. Oh, what's it doing? Compressions. Start your day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick fil A.
Out. He's now playing center field for your sailfish, number 18, Ben Green. Leading Miranda's off the over at first now. Miranda playing first, first because of the fight. Yeah, Figueroa ejected. Completely did not realize that. My bad, ladies and gentlemen. But things are moved around as Ben Green is going to get some action early here, I think, into the gap. Ben chases it down. Great play by Ben Green out in center. So speaking of the devil, coming up and coming into the game, making a very good play, showing Coach Bonfield that he deserves to be out there as much as the big guys. Yeah, we play here at Jake Rubin Park. There's plenty of room to run out there in the outfield, and that's exactly what Ben Green did, chasing that ball to the warning track out in left center. One pitch, one out for Foster. So Foster with a high pitch right there. Calls it a ball, 1-0 count. There's a shot to the second baseman, Machado. Machado takes a crow hop, ultimately gets him there. So great play by Ferranda out of first base to make the stretch and get him in time. But Machado, hitter, great play Danny to Fletcher. take the two extra crow hops and get it there. So two quick outs here for the Sailfish. Foster coming in and doing what Coach Bonfield needs him to do. Foster outside, 1-0 count. Strike right down the middle. 1-1 one, one count here for Foster. Inside pitch there. 2-1 count. Outside. Foster. Joe, a quick update coming across from Palm Beach Atlantic basketball. They were down by 16 and now they're up by five. So Sailfish Athletics trying to prosper in the basketball side of things. Cannot find any good luck on the baseball side. So Foster walks him, 3-1 count. So for the Spartans, McAllister Jurgensen is gonna be pinch hitting here. For Saladino. So, Jurgensen comes in for Saladino. Jurgensen trying to get his first at bat of this game. The sophomore from Riverview. 5'10 second baseman. 1-1 one, one count here. Outside, Jurgensen looking at that one, 2-1. Two, one. Shot out to right field. Lopez took a step in instead of taking a step out, but ultimately gets the out there and retires the top of the ninth. So Sailfish, after drama happening out to Ruben, Ben Green coming in for the Sailfish, making a great play out in center. Machado making a great play here.
One RBI here. The second baseman, number 27, Elias Machado. So Machado stepping in. Machado with the only RBI for the Sailfish today. 0-1. Oh, Swing, a hard cut, and a miss. Hard cut and another miss, 0-2. Oh, Strike three. So Machado sat down looking. Now batting for your selfish, the right fielder, number 23, Trey Lopez. Lopez. Coming up here for the Sailfish, Lopez, 0 for 3 today. Looking to get something going. Lopez to third, and he's out. The first baseman, number 33, Matt Ferranda. So Ferranda stepping up here to be the last out of this game. Ferranda takes it the other way and this game is over. So Tampa winds up sweeping the Sailfish, taking all three games. Really dominating them all today. 11 hits, eight runs. Absolute domination by the pitchers. Pitchers couldn't let up any hits if they wanted to. Sailfish couldn't hit a beach ball today. But it's all right, that's what happens when you play the number four ranked team in the nation. Sailfish played their hearts out. Gave it all they can give. Both teams played very well. But that's all that there was today, folks. Thank you for joining me and the rest of the broadcast team all day today and all weekend. I hope you had a great, enjoyable experience. It's been Joe Caponia and Caleb Dean. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.